In this segment, we're going to answer one of the most asked questions by the new DITs or new asset managers or people that want to get into this business. And that is physically on set, how do you handle the media? What do you do? What's the process you use? It's really quite simple. And it is a process and it has steps and those steps need to be adhered to exactly the same every time. If you break this rhythm, you do stand the chance of forgetting what you've done, which is a time waster, and possibly losing camera cards or data. And that's a really bad thing. Now you're gonna need a few tools and the tools are really quite simple. Um, we'll start off with post-it notes. They're really valuable to keep quick, short-term notes, stick them on things. A pair of scissors are pretty obvious here. Um, a Sharpie and a black Expo marker. We're going to talk how these two work together in just a minute. You're going to need some tape, electrical tape to be exact. Make it inexpensive. It could be paper tape. You need a couple of colors. You're going to need green and red. It's mandatory. If you have more than one camera on the shoot, then you're going to need some other colors. I've got blue here. You're going to need some bins little plastic bins, and I've got the one marked green and red, and we'll go into why that's marked that way. Got these at the five, five and Dime store. You could use a little card box or something like that, just something you can mark and, and put your cards into. You're gonna need a, a P-tape type machine, a P-touch machine. Uh, we use the tape on this to mark our cards and for various other things, pretty common in camera departments. You need something to carry your cards around on set. Now here's a Pelican case. It is really bad news to take the card out of the camera and just put it in your pocket. That's absolutely can't be done. So picking up something that can contain, hold the cards. If you have multiple cameras, this can hold you know, five or seven or eight cameras if they all do a mag change at the same time, say on a reality show. So we need something to protect that. Now at, at bare minimum, Here's a CF card and it comes in a little case. So you need to have your cards in a case when you're transporting them. And you're gonna need a little book of some sort to write down notes uh, of the production. Now you can do this on a spreadsheet as well on the computer, that's perfectly okay. In fact, it's really quite nice at the end of the day to send that to post so they know what you've done and what's happening and where other, other stuff you've done in the past. It's all well organized, it's easy to understand, but I always do a written copy that I've got with me all the time. But on my computer, I can always pull this out. I kind of call it my CYA file, but I do do a written one and I do an electronic one. So let's step through the process. Let's start at the camera. Card's been ejected from the camera and we're gonna take it right through backing the cards up and how they're handled at your workstation. Here's a quick overview of the process steps. First, establish camera colors. Then agree with the camera department how full mags will be marked and handled. Move the full mags to the workstation. Place the incoming mag in the red bin. Set up your offloading checksum software. Grab the first mag from the red bin and start the backup. Log that mag into the record book or spreadsheet. Once the backup is done, log the total amount of recorded data on the mag and the number of files. Pull the completed mag from the reader. Visually check the backup on the hard drives. Place green tape on the completed mag. Place the mag in the green ready-to-go bin and start a new mag through the process. Well, now let's do this. In this shot, you see an Ari camera with a mag loaded. Now take note that the first assistant camera has the camera name and mag number already written on the tape and the tape is stuck across the card slot on the side of the camera. They know visually there's a mag loaded and the proper mag number is already applied. Next to this on the camera body is a stack of pre-made bits of tape ready for the next mag change. This is more a camera person thing, but it's a helpful tip that you can suggest and pass along to a less experienced crew. At a camera mag change, which is announced over the radio on set, the mag is pulled and the tape is applied over the connectors on the mag. 
Often the mag is put in the case and then the tape closes the case. Make sure the mag and the tape both have the same camera and mag number. That way you'll always know what mag you're working with if the mag and the case become separated. Now, how do you mark the mag? Well, this is where the P-tape comes in. Most mags have a slight indentation in the case, so you can put it in the camera without the tape jamming the camera slot. Now, never assume this will not jam. Test the mag and the camera first. Use Sharpie to mark the card. Camera letter first, and then the mag number. Now, we won't go into the ins and outs of numbering schemes here. You can refer to this and a lot more in the digital imaging book listed below. Now here's a cool thing about P-Tape. It's a smooth surface, like a white marker board. The Sharpie ink doesn't penetrate the surface. To remove what you just wrote on the mag, use a black Expo brand marker. Scribble over the Sharpie markings, and then rub off the dry erase marker. It dissolves the Sharpie ink. Transport the mag back to your workstation in a case. It can be as simple as the original card case, or something like this Pelican brand case. At your workstation, set the red bin on the left of your work area and the green bin on the right. If you work off a mobile cart, you might want to put Velcro on the bottom of the bins and the tabletop so they stay put. Now here's a really important detail to pay attention to. When you pull the mag marking tape, stick it on top of the card reader and immediately insert the card. Then immediately start the backup. I'm so picky about this step that if my phone rings or someone just has to talk to me during this step, I pull the card, put the tape back on, and set the card back in the red bin. Why? There are two very specific points in this process that require absolute focus on your part. This is the first. Start the backup or bail on the process until you can do it without distraction. This is a good time to log the mag into your spreadsheet and logbook. There's a simple log sheet listed below for you to start using and modify. Basically, you need the production name, the date, the camera, the card number, the number of files on the card, and the total data backed up. Now, if the card is a serial number, it's a good idea to note that. Now here's a shot from the set where the incoming cards are being logged into a book. Once the backup is completed, you can pull the card from the reader. This is where I place it above the keyboard, and I kind of call this no man's land. You do not want to let cards linger here for very long. I then go to my backup drive and visually confirm that the files did copy. Now once confirmed, I will then use that Expo marker to erase the mag numbering, then put green tape on the mag, or the mag case, with the mag inside, and drop that mag into the green bin. And you're now ready to return it to set. If I have time, I'll put the mag back into the reader and erase and reformat the mag. Now remember when I said there there's two important times that you need to focus? This is the second time. If you put this mag back into the reader, and go into a utility to erase that drive. Remember, you're erasing everything on there. You need to think carefully, is everything backed up? Can I erase this mag? Am I good to go? This erasing of the mag is a double safety for the camera crew to know you have the data off the card and they are good to go with the mag. Now, what about the post-it notes and the other uses for the P-Touch printer? Here's the workspace of a DIT on a reality show. On the monitor, there's a post-it note with things that have been discussed with the camera crew or post-editing, and a quick checklist stuck right to the monitor using the P-Touch tape. Many DITs save all the camera card tapes until the end of the show. Most are more organized than this shot, but it's just another backup proving you did back up all the cards. And that's about as difficult as it gets. Now, key takeaways here. One, have a system. Never break that system. Lay out your desk, your workspace when you're on set your way and never change it. Do it show after show after show. Always keep notes. 
Always think about what you're doing before you do it, especially when you're erasing those cards. And if you get on a show that has more than just a couple of cameras, let's say a reality show where it's entirely possible to have a dozen or more cameras, things get exponentially more difficult to track. I would highly suggest that you work under a DIT as an intern or as an assistant on one of these shows before you ever tackle one. It can be a nightmare and it can get out of control very quickly. But all these same principles we've talked about with one and two cameras, all work there. It's just on a bigger scale. Paramount to making this work is that you have your system, you adhere to your system, you never change your system so that you can confidently say, I got that card, I handled that card, the card is clear to go back to set. You won't lose media that way. Your day will go a whole lot better.